Well, last year I made this video and you guys showed some really good love on this one, huh? So here's the part two. So in the first one, we discussed that how DAC do not change the tonality of the IM. A good DAC should be flat. However, still you must have experienced sometime that when you change the DAC, there's slight change in the sound. Well, what is that? Let's find out. So in this video, we will decode how a DAC changes sound if it does and how can you make sure that it doesn't. So let's start. Well, in this video, I will divide it into three parts. One, how DAC change sound. Number two, how to choose a DAC. And number three, some of my favorite DACs across the price range. So without any further ado, let's start. So there are three major ways where we can perceive changes in the sound. One is impedance mismatch, number two, Fletcher Munson curve, and number three, inherent flavor of the DAC. So let's discuss them one by one. First and foremost, the most important one, impedance mismatch. So if you are long enough into this hobby, you must have heard about the rule called rule of eight. So it simply says whatever impedance of your IM is, divide that by eight and get the amp that has lower impedance than that. It will not change the tonality of it. Well, the rule is old and it doesn't apply to the latest IEMs. Why? Let's find out. First, let's understand what impedance mismatch is. So first, let's see what is impedance. Impedance is basically resistance towards current in a very simple layman language. Higher the impedance, lower the current flow. Lower the impedance, higher the current flow. And impedance mismatch is when you connect two devices where one is very low impedance and one is high impedance. So let's take an example and understand it. So let's say you connect two devices, your IM to your DAC. And let's say the impedance of the IM is 40 ohm. And at the same time, DAC or you can say amps impedance is 2 ohm. It will create the impedance mismatch and you will see the change in the frequency response. So why it happens? It's basically one device is flowing current in a very high rate and other device has a high impedance. So it is not receiving at that particular rate. So it changes the voltage FR. Hence in our dynamic drivers, there was a rule of eight. Whatever the impedance of your driver or your IEM is, it divide that by eight and get the amp that is lower impedance than that. However, this rule is old now and it is not applicable because there are a lot of hybrid IEMs in the market which are widely available across the ranges from budget buyers to a advanced or high-end buyer. Let's take an example of Knowles Balance Armature BK26824000. Here if you see the impedance of the driver is 22 ohms. However, if you see the impedance graph, there are various peaks around 2k, 5k and onwards. So let's say you use this driver in an IEM and you connect it to an amp that has slightly higher impedance. So that will directly affect not across the ranges however 2k and 5k peaks and onwards so let's say this im is catering for 1k to 5k ranges so the 2k and 5k will see a slight elevation or slight difference in flavor this change is never too much the change in frequency response that you will see is like 0.6 decibel to 1 decibel in very rare cases 1.5 decibels so that's why you will see a lot of debate that this is not changing this is changing because human ears are capable of identifying three decibel very clearly lower than that it is more of a flavor to us so that's why when let's say if i boost the frequency or bass frequency by a margin you will see the bass note is slightly thicker however you will not be able to see the mismatch in the current tuning and with a DAC you'll only perceive it as a weight note change so just like the driver that we took uh, balance armature from Knowles similarly whatever driver that is used in your IEM you can always check the frequency graph it is easily available across the internet and their websites so the ohm or impedance that you see in your IEMs that is given as a specification is almost 
throughout the ranges. It is never the highest or the lowest. And those peaks generally creates those mismatches where the whole debate starts that it has better vocals, it has slightly better note, it has thinner note, higher note. These all are the flavors arrives out of impedance mismatch. I hope I was able to make it a bit clear. Special thanks to my friend Dhruv who works in this industry and explained that to me in very easy way so that I can convey it to you guys. Well, generally amps are not very high impedance. They are generally 2 ohm or less. The best way is to not follow the rule of 8 but to follow rule of 16. Always divide your IEM's impedance by 16 and get the amp or DAC that is lower than that. That will not affect the tonality of your IEM. So this is the impedance mismatch. This is the first picture that changes the sound or perception of sound in your IEMs. Number two is Fletcher Munson curve. Well, not many people fuss around this one. However, this is one of the most important topic of this industry. Our ears listen all the frequencies at exactly same level at around 80 to 85 decibel. So when you're listening to let's say 20 decibel or 30 decibel, some frequencies specifically mid range is clear. However, bass and treble are not that clear. With increase in sound, all the frequencies matches. So we listen best at around 80 to 85 decibel. So that's why specifically when you are using DAC and AMP, the sound generally louder. We do not do volume match, right? Let's say you're listening to a mobile phone directly by 3.5 mm and you connect to a DAC. DACs are generally louder. You are not doing a volume match and sudden increase in volume is a perception of better sound, all frequencies across the ranges, good resolution. If you do a volume match, very high chances much of what you are listening will be almost at the same level. This is the same principle that happens in 4.4 balance as well. While 4.4 balance has its own unique uh, usability, but the major difference that people hear is because of Fletcher Munson curve. When you move from 3.5 to 4.4, the sound is slightly louder and you perceive like 4.4 is slightly better than 3.5 and you adhere to it. So Fletcher Munson curve is a very important topic to understand audio. Now the third part is inherent flavor of the DAX and amps. Well DAX and amps have their own flavor. If you go for op amps, bursons, etc. they have their own flavor. Companies design their DAC and amps according to their philosophy and creates their own masterpiece. For example, if I talk about DAX, Cirrus Logic chips, they portray slightly thick weight note in comparison to eSaber, which is a bit more clinical and analytical in nature. AKM again is very intimate and warm. Additionally, some of the DAX and AMPs are using some different technology to provide you different flavors, like my luxury and precision W2 Ultra. Here you have various presets available for some legendary IEMs and headphones to play around with. So you get different flavors slightly with all these modifications. iFi Audio, again, very famous for their X-Space and X-Space presentation in their DAC and amps. Really fantastic take from them. And additionally, uh, different technologies again create small, small difference here and there. Then again, there are different implementations like R2R, tubes, and there are many more. They are slightly different from the solid state, delta sigma, etc. Lot of word here and there, right? So I'll try to explain them in a different video. If I explain everything here, it would be a very long video. So do comment if you want that I should cover these technical topics more. So I will try to cover them. So in conclusion, there are three major things that changes a DAC tonality. Impedance mismatch. Number two, Fletcher Munson curve. And number three, there are different inherent nature of DAC and AMPs and how they are implemented. And again, this is not just limited to this. There are again other factors like cyanide, DNR, etc. So, but the major difference that comes in your perception is out of these three. So how should you buy a DAC and AMP? You know my stance from day one. I always say the fundamental part of your budget should always be allocated towards IM or headphone. That is where you get the most change. The transducer, the drivers, they are the major part of changes. 
DAC and AMS are just for flavors, not to replace your IEMs. DAC and AMP budget should never exceed your IEMs or fundamentals. Second, use rule of 16 instead of rule of 8. Divide the impedance of your IEM headphone divided by 16. Whatever impedance come, get a DAC or AMP that is lower than that. Third, remember DAC and AMP make major change in psychoacoustics, distortion handling and the resolution, which again adds up to the cost and the engineering of that particular DAC and AMP. So that is the third and major important. If your budget allows, try to experiment with these high-end DAC and AMPs they do provide different kind of resolution and tonality to fulfill your needs lastly one of the most important thing that you should look in a DAC is the synad generally it is said that anything above 85 is good lesser than that would create a lot of hiss and distortion in your DAC one more reason i really love apple dongle in the budget section so four things one fundamental budget should always be allocated towards iem and headphones Two, use rule of 16 three dac and amps do provide major change in psychoacoustics distortion and resolution three anything above 85 is a good sign ad i generally try to go above 90 or 100 still confused these are my favorite dac and amps across the ranges apple dongle still one of my favorites then we have kiwi ear selegro mini you have seen my video i gave this five star around hundred dollar shanling onyx x1l and btr15 are absolutely crazy around 200 dollar i would say ibaso dc07 pro is creme de la creme around 300 dollar these are three musketeers for me questile m15i luxurian precision w2 ultra and kine ru7 crazy dax going up i really love x duo xd05 bell 2 and i5 diablo 2 so there are a lot of other decks as well like currently i'm enjoying this kai tech one pro really interesting take by kai design i'll come up with a review very soon then we have dabs like this estlin kern khan ultra so the sky is the limit so the best thing is to experience the market is never ending it is flooded with the products so Trust your listening, no matter what others say. Trust your listening. Demo, if you see there's a change, there's a change. If there's no change, there's no change. Trust your ears. For me, sound is a lot about mathematics and science. And time and time, I like to dig deep into it. Generally, I do not talk this technical stuff in my video because most of the audience is not well versed with it and they don't want to be too technical however if you like this video and if you want more technical topics like this do give a comment and i will try to cover some more till then remember guys the major difference in your im comes via eq and ear tips ear tips are the goat no matter which stack you buy you can always increase this base shelf or the treble shelf according to your taste in the wavelet or peq well this was it for this video if you still have some questions i might have left some uh, part of it so if you have additional knowledge do provide in the comments do ask your question in the comments i will reply now i will come up with some dap and dac videos where i'll be explaining about sound a little bit so you will have no surprise and you will know where all these changes are coming and they will never match up to a different im flavor or a eq so i'll see you on the next one resolution is in your im if it's not no deck can provide it